you? I just got out of the shower and I'm putting on some toner now. I'm using the Retrove Conditioning Tonic with Chamomile. I always want to just call this the Chamomile Toner, but that is the full name. Uh, and just spreading this evenly across. Anyway, how are you guys? I am, I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm so, so tired. I, um, I've had like three nights in a row of strange sleep. So three nights ago, I fell asleep uh, pretty much at regular time and I woke up at like one in the morning for no reason. It was like one of those nights and I don't have those often. I'm usually I'm a pretty good sleeper, but you know, if I'm busy, if I have a lot on my mind, um, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and then I won't be able to fall back asleep. That's the worst. So that was three nights ago. And you know, I was able eventually to get back to sleep, but broken sleep, horrible. You know, when you just feel like you woke up from a nap, you're like really groggy. That's how I felt that morning. Then I decided to go to Orange Theory to work out because I had not gone in about a week. And I was like, I have to go because if I don't go at least, at least once a week, the time that I go back, like if it's any longer, I'll just regret it. I'll be so sore. I'll feel so out of shape. <laughs> so I'm like, it's been a week. I gotta go. So I did that. And so it was just kind of a long day. Um, I went to like an early morning class. And then that night I did a live stream um, on Kat's channel. And we talked about luxury handbags and we started at 8 p.m., which for any normal person, totally fine, totally fine. But for me, because I go to sleep at around 8.30, 9 o'clock, and so I'm in bed usually at around 8 o'clock, um, <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna be so, so delirious. I didn't even know how long I'd be able to make it into the live stream, but we had so much fun. Um, I can apparently talk about luxury handbags for hours and days, not a problem. I just put on the um, Sicily Brightening Hydrating Lotion. And so that was great fun, but I went to bed really late that night. I probably finally ended up in bed and asleep at around 11.30. And again, if you're a normal adult, like, okay, 11.30. I woke up the next day like I was jet lagged, like I was hung over. I felt terrible because I woke up at 6.30, which is a little bit late for me. I couldn't sleep any longer, you know? So anyway, I was exhausted yesterday and then I got my flu shot. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I should be fine. Like the flu shot, I've had it before. Of course, every year it's different. I've had it before. Um, usually I just, I sleep pretty heavily and then I wake up the next day and I feel fine. Well, I, maybe because I was like kind of tired and my sleep was kind of messed up, <laughs> I just couldn't get it together all day. I was such a mess. I was in and out of bed. I was laying down in the lazy boy chair in the family room, which, you know, then I would kind of doze off for a few minutes and then I'd wake up. So I finally just succumbed and I went to bed at about six. I just got into bed. I was like, F it. I can't, I can't like fight this anymore. I wasn't even doing anything. I was like completely unproductive. Um, and I got, I got into bed and I probably fell asleep by like seven and woke up at what time? 3.50 because of daylight savings. I'm like, I am so screwed. I'm so tired. <laughs> so it was really 4.50 because we went back an hour. And 4.50 for me is kind of a normal, kind of a normal time. But yeah, I'm just, I'm screwed. I hate daylight savings. I don't know why we do it. We have electricity now. So anyway, by the time you guys watch this, um, hopefully I'll be recovered. But I am such a baby when it comes to not getting the amount or the quality of sleep that I need. I, I'm just a bit, I, it's worse than when I'm sick. When I'm sick, I'm just like, whatever, kind of ignore it, whatever. I just try and go about my day, depending on how bad it is. I just try and go about my day or whatever. When I'm tired, it's like, wow, wow. Can Michelle throw herself a bigger pity party? I think not. So that's where we're at. Um, I do have a couple things to do today. Uh, the first thing actually that I wanted to show you, and this video is being sponsored by Droplet. So Droplet is this skincare device 
and I've been using it for quite some time now. Um, I'm still continuing to test it, but I did want to introduce you guys to this. Let me just first say that the people over at Droplet are incredible. When they approached me to do um, a sponsored video for them, I said, well, you know, I'd really like to lose it a little bit longer because they had sent it to me or whatever before we had even talked about a sponsorship. They had sent it to me before and I had started to use it, but you know, when I use stuff and I'm not like paying close attention, I'm just kind of enjoying it and using it and I'm like, oh yeah, my skin looks nice. And so I told them, I said, I really want to like really kind of make notes and take notes and really kind of experience the experience of the device. And they were like, well, why don't we do like a two part sponsorship? So this is the first part where I'm going to start, not start using it, but start really observing how my skin looks and feels after I use the device. And then I'm gonna come back in, I don't know, a month, four weeks, six weeks, and really give you a follow up on my observations and everything. And, you know, not a lot of companies will let you do that. That's how confident they are in this device. And I have really heard amazing, amazing things about uh, this droplet device. So essentially what this device does is it uses a capsule, which goes in here. And these are what the capsules look like. So here is one capsule. So they have three different uh, capsules. They have collagen, which is this guy. They have a retinol and they have a glycolic acid. And so when I started to talk to them, I said, well, I only really feel comfortable using the um, collagen ones because I have sensitive eczema prone skin. So retinols, I can't usually use glycolic acid. I definitely don't feel comfortable using. So they actually sent over the retinol capsules to me and we're actually gonna be using this together for the first time. Now, they said just use it on a small part of your face, make sure it doesn't get irritated, but they're pretty confident that my skin would not be bothered by this because of the technology. So what this device does is it takes the solution that's in the capsule and you just lift this up and you put the capsule in. You can push it all the way in or you can use this lid to kind of press it all the way down. I'm just gonna push it all the way in, it snaps in place. Um, it is cordless, it does have like a charging device. And what it does is it creates like super micro fine droplets, thus the name, droplets of the product. And what it does is it penetrates the top layer of your skin and it goes down further. So that's why they feel confident that the retinol will be fine for my skin because it's just gonna surpass that top layer of my skin, which is what gets irritated by these sort of more potent um, ingredients like retinols. So I am gonna go ahead and use this capsule first. So this one again is the collagen and then the power button is over here. You just press this area right here. So when you turn the device on, there's gonna be three cycles to the entire treatment. And so what I do is I'll start on one cheek and then I'll hear it stop. And then I'll move over to the other cheek, I'll hear it stop. And then I'll move over to my forehead. And then once it stops, uh, I'm done with one treatment. So. Uh, once I'm done, I just lift up this uh, lid and then I take out the capsule. And what is definitely worth mentioning is when you order uh, the device and you order the capsules, um, what you get is this return envelope. So it goes back to Droplet. This is what you can put all your capsules into and they recycle them. So I know that was a concern of mine, you know, when we use these like one off little capsules or whatever. It's the amount of waste that you produce is concerning. And I know it's an issue for you guys as well. So I wanted to mention that. I thought that was really, really wonderful. So for me, there was definitely a little bit of a learning curve. I was holding it like this in my hand and I was just sort of facing my mirror and doing it. And because there's that mist that comes out, I was inhaling it, which is totally fine. It's not harmful to you, but it's a little bothersome. And I was like, <clears throat> you know, kind of coughing it up. And I actually asked uh, the woman over at Droplet that I've been speaking to, I said, is this, am I using it wrong? <laughs> she said, no, that's actually something they'd heard from a lot of customers. And what has helped is you want to kind of lean back or lean your head back at like a 45 degree angle, or you want to do this kind of like laying down in a laying down position. And then when you do that, the mist just kind of runs off and you won't be like inhaling it. And that has helped tremendously. So I just wanted to pass that along to you guys because it being a mist is like the most important aspect of this. We have so many uh, skincare items and, and products where it's topical, where this 
really gets in there. So that is the collagen that I just used. And I like using the collagen during the day for sure. I use it every morning now. And I am noticing my skin like around like my forehead, which is like such thin skin and I have these like canyons in there, but I feel like it's helped with that. It's kind of making the skin on my forehead and like this area just look a little bit uh, plumper. So yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying this, but I'm definitely gonna follow up with you guys uh, like I said, in like four to six weeks, I'm going to do a follow-up, but I am going to continue to use the collagen every day, and I'm going to start using the retinol every night. Let me finish getting ready, and I'll be right back. I am on my way to my mom's. I realize I have not seen her in a while because I've been so busy. Um, she hasn't even seen my scarves, um, the scarves that I just released. She hasn't even seen them in person. She watched my reveal video and was like, I haven't seen these yet. So I'm bringing them over to show her. So I am just going over to hang out basically. Usually I've been going over to help her with some bills or, you know, fill up gas in her car, just do a few errands or whatever, but she's good. She's been able to take care of everything herself. I'm so proud of her. Learning new things, making changes, adjusting to being alone ever since my dad passed away. I, I can't even imagine how hard and how difficult that is and she's just been, she's been so good. She's been a real trooper, real trooper and really wanting to be able to, you know, take care of herself and I'm just proud of her. I'm proud of my mom. Anyway, so I'm on my way over there and then um, I just wanted to have a little chat with you guys. A little, um, I guess it's a life update. <laughs> that always sounds so serious to me, like life update. I feel like that's what people say when they have like, I don't know, a pregnancy or a wedding or something like really major. Nothing that big is going on. The last time I did speak to my mom, I have an aunt and uncle that live here. I actually have a couple aunts and uncles that live here, but one set <laughs> of aunt and uncle. Uh, they are hosting Thanksgiving, and so my mom thought it would be a good idea if I hosted Christmas. And after kind of counting down who would be in town, uh, my cousin, my aunt and uncle's um, daughter, her husband, her two kids, I have another aunt and uncle that may be in town, their kids may fly in. So at most, I think I'm gonna have about 15 people. I have not had 15 people in, like in any of my homes, <laughs> uh, let alone this one, let alone this new one. And you know, my mom's like, oh, you have the room now? And I said, I have the room now, but I don't have the furniture. I have six, counter stools and that's it. I don't have a table. The table that I ordered from Serena and Lily actually will be delivered on Wednesday, um, but no chairs. Those chairs are back ordered and no dining table. And that table is a small one. It's a round table for like my little kitchen nook. I got four chairs for that. So even the four chairs and the six counter stools wouldn't be enough. So I am going um, dining room table shopping later. <laughs> <laughs> this afternoon. Uh, you know, everything is back ordered, nothing is in stock. I'm just, I'm really nervous about whether or not um, I'm gonna be able to find something that I like. But I have to get something anyway, and I figured, why not go take a look now? It's just not, not something I was planning on doing, not something I was planning on purchasing yet, but again, it's something I'm eventually gonna have to purchase, and I may as well start looking now. So. We're gonna go to Restoration Hardware this afternoon because I did notice they had quite a few things in stock when I put in my zip code, um, at least online. So uh, before I make that investment, I definitely want to um, take a look at them in person. So there's a Restoration Hardware here in Las Vegas, thankfully. And yeah, that's what I'm gonna be doing this afternoon. And you know, I'm also, um, planning on doing Mishmas this December. And if you guys are you know, new to my channel or unaware of what Mishmas is, is basically my version of Vlogmas. I just, I just call it Mishmas. And um, I'm gonna be posting for uh, almost every day in December. So in the past, what I've done is every single day in December, from the 1st to the 31st. And most people, when they do Vlogmas, they'll do the 25 days of Vlogmas. And I always thought, if I'm doing it, I may as well do it for the entirety of December, but I think 
I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna do the 25 days of Mishmas. I am not going to do um, all 31 days. So that's, that's the plan. And I know we're only in the beginning of November right now, but I have to start planning and I have to start pre-filming. I haven't really been able to do a lot of that in the past, you know, pre-filming and planning out my content, all that kind of stuff. And it has always been so excruciatingly busy and stressful. And I, I just, I question my choice, my life choices um, every time I do Mishmas. So this will be my third year doing it. And so I'm cutting back on the days and I'm gonna try and plan. <laughs> I'm gonna try and plan a little bit. You know, with all that going on and if I'm hosting Christmas, um, you know, I just feel so overwhelmed. You know, the scarf release, that was a huge side project of mine. I have a couple of other things in the works. I just feel really, really, um, you know, I think overwhelmed is like very dramatic. Um, I, I just feel like there just aren't enough hours in the day. Like if I could just tack on, you know, four to six extra hours every day, I could do it. I could do it all. What I've decided to do is finally, finally get some help. Um, it's something I've been thinking about for, you know, a, a really long time and I just never really felt like I could afford it. Um, and it's, you know, there's also that kind of like sense of control that you're kind of giving up when you start to delegate work. Um, but I have finally, finally hired an editor. So as you guys know, I put out quite a few videos. Um, I probably put out around 25 videos a month, of course, depending on the month. And it probably takes, I don't know, we'll, we'll say an average of four hours per video. And so you can imagine how many hours that is. We can very quickly add up that that is about 100 hours of work um, that I am offloading. I'm so excited that I, I feel like I can finally do it, but I'm also really, I'm being very cautious about it too because there's absolutely no way someone other than yourself can edit your video um, in the exact style that you do it. So I'm taking it slow with this editor. Um, I am giving them feedback like one thing at a time, like how I like transitions, um, do I zoom in, when I zoom in, um, do I put text overlays on things, the font that I use. You know, I didn't want to overwhelm the editor right off the bat. And I also didn't want to overwhelm them with too much B-roll in the beginning when they were starting to, you know, learn my style. So, you know, B-roll is when it's like an extra piece of footage. Like a lot of times when I do a swatch, um, I won't just swatch right there and hold up my hand. I'll have actual extra footage of me with the swatches and like, you know, I'm just talking over it. And, you know, I thought, let me just do the swatch as part of the video. So it just, it's just a little bit easier for the editor. It's just less work. Um, so, you know, a lot of why I'm telling you this is one, to let you know that uh, someone else is editing my videos. And so I feel like you're probably gonna notice, you may have already noticed because some videos have gone up already. You may have already noticed that it may look a little bit different or um, just feel a little bit different. So I did wanna just let you know uh, for that reason. And also, I, you know, for any of you guys out there, you know, if you work for yourself, if you're an entrepreneur, if you do YouTube videos, if you're an Instagrammer, it, I can't tell you when the right time is, but if you start to feel like there just aren't enough hours in the day and that you could really use those hours for something else, it is so worth it to get someone to help you, to just rip that band-aid off and just start the process because I'm thinking now by the time Mishmas rolls around, this editor will probably have a pretty decent idea of my style and you know the pace at which I put out videos and how much work uh, he's gonna be getting and so yeah, it's just, it's a good thing to start. And if it doesn't work out, I told myself, I'm like, if it doesn't work out, then I go back to editing my own videos. Like, it's not, it's not a big deal. Like, I tried it or whatever, but I really had to give it a shot. I really, really needed the help. And I'm so glad that I got out of my own stubborn way and finally contacted someone. 
So those are the few updates that I wanted to give you that I'll be doing mishmas. I got an editor. I have to find a dining room. <laughs> Just a mishmash of updates there. Um, but I'm excited for mishmas. I hope you guys are too. I, I really enjoy having a variety of content, having some vlogs, having some sit down videos on my channel. And I think I want to continue doing that uh, for mishmas. That's what I've done in the past. In the past, I've done a lot more sit down type videos. Um, I just wasn't vlogging as much. There wasn't as much to vlog, especially last December. <laughs> um, but I, you know, I would throw some in there, at least try to. This year I feel like I'll probably be vlogging a little bit more than usual, but I definitely want to have sit down videos as well, especially if they're new makeup releases or, um, like I'm definitely going to be doing year end favorites that that's a sit down video. So there will definitely be both. I know some people prefer one or the other, so there will definitely be both. And we'll try and make it fun. Um, I, I am, like I said, I am trying to plan a little bit, which I've never been able to do in the past. <laughs> it's always been such a thrown together, like I'm just gonna film every day, we'll see what happens. Um, so yeah, I'm planning some fun things. I have one collaboration in the work, collaboration with another YouTuber. I have that um, already planned and I'm really excited. I hope you guys are too. So I'm almost at my mom's. Um, I will be back later when we hit Restoration Hardware because I have never been to the one here in Vegas, but um, as you guys probably know, the Restoration Hardware stores are like, they're not like normal stores. They are um, like, showrooms that are just beyond. I mean, they they make the entire space feel like a restoration hardware home. And some of them even have restaurants in there. I don't know if the one in Vegas has a restaurant, but I know the one that I stopped by in Chicago has a restaurant. Uh, the one in New York has a restaurant. So they're like, they're like meant to be one of those places where you go and you stay and you hang out and you really get a chance to like get a feel for the furniture, which I think is fantastic. I think it's so important. So anyway, I will be taking you along to Restoration Hardware and then actually to um, entice my husband to come with me. <laughs> I mean, I think he's interested in, in what we get in terms of dining room furniture. Not as much as I care. I think he's more of like someone who just knows what he doesn't like, but he could probably look around and be like, these are all fine, <laughs> you know? Anyway, to entice him to come along to waste an entire afternoon in a furniture store, we are going to our favorite restaurant up there, uh, which is, well, one of our favorite restaurants, and it's very, very close to this restoration hardware. So we're gonna be hitting that afterwards. I'm very excited because they have a grass-fed filet mignon there. And that's what I'll be having. All right, just about at my mom's. I will see you guys in a bit.
guys. So we are back from, oh, I'm not my hair, <laughs> Restoration Hardware, having dinner. And I just wanted to show you what table and chairs we ended up getting. So um, they were actually in stock. Um, the table and six of the chairs and the two like at the head of the table and the end of the table uh, those two like armchairs that we got those actually have to be um, ordered so those are coming next February we hope but the table and six of the chairs are coming uh, in two weeks or so less than two weeks actually uh, like 10 days or something like that so so excited but I wanted to show you our dining room so here's our dining room it's actually 16 and a half feet long and then uh, 12 and a half feet wide. And we've got these two chandeliers here and these wooden beams. So the table we got is uh, not exactly the same as these beams, but close. They're like, kind of like an ashen gray. So I think they're a little bit cooler than these, but pretty similar, pretty similar. And definitely a similar feel where they look kind of uh, raw. And then the chairs that we got are in a natural, um, fabric, which I think will look really great with these chandeliers. So this is the table that we ended up getting from Restoration Hardware. It's called the Aspen French Oak Rectangular Dining Table. And that is the Ash French Oak. So you can see it's not like as cool as, well, the floor is more like um, gray. This is uh, like a has a little bit of warmth to it, which I really like. And then, let me see if I can find, oh, here we go. So I really liked it. When I first looked at this, I thought, mm, that's not really my thing. But when you sit down at the ends of the table where um, my husband and I would probably end up sitting, you can put your feet up right in this opening. It's so comfortable. And we both really hate um, when there's like seats at the table that aren't comfortable. So three chairs fit comfortably in between here and then we're gonna have one at each end. So we're gonna have eight chairs in total and everyone's gonna have like enough leg room and everything. There's no like strange legs sticking out. And there was uh, a table similar to this with like solid um, legs or it's like, it looked like a solid board, like if that was filled in. And I just, I'm like, if you're tall, let's say if someone tall decides to sit in that seat, their knees would probably hit it. So yeah, so we just really liked that it was just comfortable, you know, and that every seat would have enough leg room. There weren't any like legs for potential toe stubbing, which I can't stand. And then these are the side chairs that we got with casters. So there's gonna be wheels. I was just kind of thinking of my mom and my aunts and uncles that are, you know, well, none of us are actually getting any younger. Um, but these chairs without the casters without the wheels on the bottom, really, really heavy. So we got them with casters and then we got it with just a natural color, a color similar to this that you see on the screen. Uh, we got like a performance, I think it's called like a performance linen fabric or something. Anyway, it's supposed to be like very durable and very, very easy to wash, which is perfect for a dining chair. Um, so we got six of these, so three for each side. And then this is the chair that we ended up getting for the two ends of the table. Um, we couldn't, not that we couldn't, because we eventually did decide on this one, but we had a hard time deciding between this and just a regular track arm, which would just be straight across instead of the slope. But I just found the slope really comfortable, and we got slope arms for um, the couches in our family room. So I thought, oh, why don't we go ahead and carry it on over? It's a little bit more traditional, a little bit less modern than the track arm, but. I don't know, I kind of just like that gentle slope. Otherwise I felt like it was too, I don't know, too angular. So we also got this in the natural color. This is white, so I got something a little bit softer, like in here. So these are the side chairs that we got, and then these are the end chairs that we got. Hey guys, so I am getting ready for bed. Ooh, let me close my blinds. Okay, so I'm getting ready for bed. I just washed my face and I want to use one of these retinol capsules in my droplet device. So I've got one of the red capsules, which is the retinol. The collagen ones are yellow. All right, so I, I kind of forgot. I meant to only put it 
down here along my jawline. So I remembered when I got to this cheek and then automatically I just started using it on my forehead. Um, I really wanted to test out just like a little part of my face before kind of um, putting it all over, but we'll see, <laughs> we'll see what happens. So like I've mentioned, I have eczema prone skin and I'm not generally able to use retinol products because it will kind of disrupt my skin's barrier and my eczema will come out. Um, but I really wanted to give this a try since uh, the mist action is supposed to get beyond the barrier of your skin and kind of penetrate further. So hopefully, hopefully that works, but I'm just taking kind of a close look at my skin now, see if we wake up with any difference. And I've only washed my face. I didn't do any of the toner or anything yet. In fact, because of this retinol, I think I'm gonna skip toner, just really stick to things that are super gentle. Like I'll probably put on my eye cream and then put on my um, evening moisturizer and that's it and just go from there. Like I mentioned, I'm going to be following up with you guys on Droplet and how these things have worked for me. And you'll probably see me use them if I vlog <laughs> between now and when I do my kind of final check-in with you guys um, for Droplet in about four to six weeks. Um, but that's it. That is it. Thank you guys so, so much for tuning in. Big thank you to Droplet for sponsoring this video. And I will see you guys really soon.